as you find your breath now, as you find your Ujjayi breath. Please start to make sure that your exhale is lengthening. But maybe the first time you take an exhale, it's about four seconds long. But we're really growing the out breath to as close to 10 seconds as possible. If you feel like you're empty before you get to that 10 second count, keep the action of your exhale going. Keep hugging into midline, keep drawing your navel back towards your spine, keep the back muscles engaging to wrap around the back of your spine, but keep that action, that concentrated action of plugging in and digging a little deeper, right? Each time you take an exhale. And know that that little bit of extra effort is going to make a lot of difference um, in your practice and also even off of your mat. Take two more breaths like that. Once you finish that next or last round really of your ujjayi breath, begin to extend your spine a little more, open up. And notice how you're crossing your legs. Let's everyone start with their left shin crossed in front of their right. So mirroring what I'm doing, left in front of right. We're not stacking, we're not crossing over. We're just placing the left shin in front of the right. We're gonna start with an inhale to reach the arms up. And as you exhale, mirroring what I'm doing, right hand will come down and your left arm will reach over. Reach as far away from your left knee as possible here. Take a huge breath in into the left side of your body. As you exhale, dive a little deeper by bringing your right elbow closer to the floor. Hug your right side body in strongly. Inhale, reach up and rise up. Extend both arms. As you exhale, twist now to your left, bringing your right hand to the outside of your left knee. You're gonna push your right foot into your left inner thigh and push your left inner thigh back into that pressure. As you do so, you're gonna also push your left foot into your right shin, all right? So both of those activate your lower abdomen. You'll feel that and you'll feel that activation. Take an inhale, grow taller. And on your exhale, push the feet into their thigh or shin and slowly, while you're doing that, go ahead and bring out a little more. Take an inhale to reach up, rise up, sweep the arms overhead again. As you exhale, dive over your legs. Bring your hands to the floor whenever you feel like your core isn't going to support you anymore. And draw your torso all the way down to the ground or at least as close as you can get. Take an inhale now into the back of your body. Expand your back ribs into the ceiling toward the sky. As you exhale, make sure your neck is relaxed. My head is looking up so that you can hear me, but your neck gets to be relaxed. If you can walk your arms even further forward and drape your torso even closer to the ground, please do. But make sure that your abs are strong. Remember, we're taking that 10 second exhalation. Now slowly roll up. Sweep the arms overhead, take an inhale here. Again, lengthening, turn your palms face out. You're gonna swivel your arms through the shoulders so that when you come back, your hands will come back behind you. You're gonna lift your heart here. Inhale to open up the chest. And exhale to round your back, engage your abdominals. Two more, inhale to lift your heart. Your chin is reaching up, exhale, round your back. Let your upper back open. Good, one more time, inhale, lift the heart. And exhale to round your back. This time, press down through your shins, lift your heart up toward the sky, and also if you'd like to, lift the pelvis. Again, your chin is reaching to the ceiling, hold here. Claw the floor with your fingertips so that your wrists are in line with your, with your arms. And make sure that your elbows are slightly unlocked here. Right? Make sure, in other words, that your elbows are slightly bent. And take one more inhale to lift the hips even higher. Engage your glutes to move your pelvis further forward. And exhale, release. Once you sit down, please uncross your legs 
I'm sorry, um, lift up your legs. Your right, your left shin will be crossed over your right. So again, mirroring what I'm doing here. Left over right. Take an inhale to lean back and reach your legs forward. And on your exhale, bring your knees in. And you can even hug your knees in if you'd like. And if you want to keep it more of an abdominal uh, workout, just reach your fingers past your shins. Let's do that much again. Take an inhale, lean back, extend the legs straight. Exhale, bring it in slowly. And hold here for a full breath. Balancing on your sit bones, you can always again pull in a little more if you want to turn this into a, into a stretch. One more time, inhale, extend. And exhale, bring it in. You can even hug in for a moment and then try to keep your knees in while you're reaching your arms past your knees. But on your next inhalation, we're gonna uncross the legs. Bring it back down so that now you're right, mirroring what I'm doing again. Your right shin is going to be in front of your left shin. Not stacked, not crossed, just right in front of. Take an inhale and reach up. Open up the chest. As you exhale this time, we're going to dive over to your left side. Reach your right arm over, bend your left elbow. Make sure you're not caving in here. So if you need to, you're gonna really rotate open. Your right armpit will face the ceiling. You're reaching away from your right knee rather than your right sit bone. So in this position, if your right sit bone wants to come up a bit, that's fine, but don't let the knee come with it, right? Keep your knee reaching as far away from your fingertips as possible. Feel that stretch on your right side body and feel the engagement on the left side. Good, rise up slowly, sweep both arms overhead as you inhale. And exhale, twist now to the right side. Left hand to outside of right knee, left right hand behind you. Push your left foot into your right inner thigh. Push your right foot into your left shin. Once you activate both of those, uh, both, both feet pushing, you're gonna feel again a little more toning across the lower belly. So use that on your next exhalation to ring out the lower belly. Take another inhale, let your neck grow longer. Let your spine extend more, especially through the middle back. Exhale, ring out, turn to look over your back shoulder even more. Inhale, slowly unravel again. Both arms rising on your inhale, lengthen out both sides of your torso. Exhale, dive forward. Try to go as far forward without using your arms, right? Use your core to lower you. Once you feel like your core says no, no more of that, then bring your hands down. Slide the arms as far forward as possible. You may want to place your forearms on the mat and call it good. And you may want to let your neck relax a lot more so that maybe your forehead even touches the floor. If you feel like you can walk the arms forward and drop the torso down even more, please do. Just make sure that your abs are completely engaged and we're still working with that longer, stronger 10 second exhalation, right? Take a strong exhale here one more time. Slowly drag your fingers in so that the arms can support you as you lift. Reach the arms up again. And this time you're gonna turn your palms out so that as you reach back, you're swiveling the arms easily through the shoulders. Claw the floor with your fingertips. Inhale to open the chest here. And push down with your shins already. Exhale, round your back, chin comes into the soft part of your throat. Inhale, lift the heart, open the chest. And exhale, round your back, chin comes in. One last time, take that inhale. Allow the heart to rise, allow your chin to rise. As you exhale, chin tucks in toward the soft part of your throat, your upper back is opening, your abs are engaging. Now inhale, push down through your shins, lift the pelvis. You can always stay seated there if you'd like. Your hands are, uh, you're clawing the floor with your fingertips, you're on the heels of your hands. I'm sorry, the balls of the hands rather than the um, palms entirely so that your wrists are staying in line with your forearms. Again, strong glutes here so that we can feel this really strong, nice stretch across the front of the pelvis. Really good for the hip flexors. Take one final inhale here, lift the hips even higher, and exhale, release your hips down. Lean back, and now you're going to lift the feet up. This time, your left shin will be crossed, I'm sorry, your right shin will be crossed over your left. Start by holding onto your thighs this time. Take an exhale to extend the legs out. 
and inhale to bring the knees in. Now, if you want to go a little further with that, you can do this without holding on to your knees, right? As you exhale, think of pushing something really heavy away. As you inhale, bring everything in and up. Exhale, push something heavy away. This time, hold here for a full breath. Good. And inhale, bring it back in. Balancing on those sit bones. Exhale, press it away. Hold here for a full breath. Good, bring it in. And once you are there, you're going to uncross both legs. Place the soles of your feet down to the floor. Take an inhale, hold on to the backs of your thighs. Open up the chest. And as you exhale, round your back. Again, inhale, lift the heart. This time, bring your right leg up and hold here. You can hold, keep rooting down to the sole of your left foot. You can hold on with both of your hands to the back of your right hamstring. And we're just, the back of your right leg, I should say, your hamstring. But we should, uh, we should be able to feel like we can do this easily, right? Without tension in the shoulders, but just make sure that there is no tension in the shoulders here. If you feel like you can go a little further, you can reach up and grab your calf instead. Again, we might have a tendency to be up here in those shoulders, so don't add tension to one part of your body so that you can release it in another. Flex your right foot, keep those shoulder blades rolling down your back. Take another deep breath in here. As you exhale, bend your elbows perhaps if you want to go a little further and bring the right leg in closer to your chest. Good. And then release your right foot down. Bring your left leg up. And again, just extend it on its own. You can decide to hold on to your hamstrings here. Lift out of your back. Make sure the shoulders are down. If this is not enough of a stretch for you, reach up and take a hold of your calves. If that is causing you to strain your shoulders, you can always keep your hands here or even one hand, right? But just make sure it's not worth it to tense up those shoulders. It really, really is not. The quads are strong on the left leg. Both sit bones are rooted down into the floor. Your spine is extending. Take an inhale here. Check in with how this stretch feels. If you feel like you can go further with that strong, long exhale, bend your elbows. Draw the leg in closer. And as you draw the leg in, keep rooting down with the sole of your right foot as well. Flex your left foot if possible, just a little more, pushing through the left heel to increase the stretch on your left calves. Good, and then slowly releasing your leg, release your left foot down next to your right foot. Hold on to the backs of your thighs, take a huge inhale, and exhale, round your back. Good, we're gonna go a little further than that now. So now as you take your uh, right leg to extend it, we're gonna bring the left foot inside the right inner thigh. So your left foot, mirroring what I'm doing again, will come into the inner thigh if the leg were down, right? But now our leg is up. So mirroring what I'm doing, your right leg is reaching up. Hold on in the same way you did before. Pull those toes back and draw the elbows. If you can bend your elbows, start to draw them in alongside your calf. Make sure that your foot is flexed. Try to get your toes to spread out a little bit more here. This is Crunchasana or a little variation of Crunchasana. Take one final inhale in this pose. As you exhale, release your leg, hold it up on its own. That means your quads have to strengthen here. Lower the leg as slowly as possible. Once your heel touches, your left foot will be inside your right inner thigh. Push your foot into your thigh and push your thigh back into that pressure. Sweep the arms overhead, inhale here. And exhale, dive over your right leg. Fold your ribs over your right thigh. Bring your forehead to your right shin. Again, you are not looking up. I'm only looking up so you can hear me. Once you find your exhale, remember we're exhaling for as close to 10 seconds as possible. And that doesn't mean that at four, you're like, okay, that's enough. No, even if you're empty, push it to 10, right? Push it to at least eight or nine. Really allow your exhale. I'm telling you, it makes a huge difference when we're stretching, when we're stiff especially, right? So even if you feel empty, engage in the action of your exhale for as close to 10 as possible.
Take one more full inhale. And a 10 second exhale. At the end of that exhalation, just go further. Even if it's just a millimeter more, just go further so that your body knows you can go further the next time. Then reach past your right foot and with strong abdominals, rise up. Good, opening up, great job. Take both hands, we're gonna do just the same. We're gonna turn the palms out, swivel your arms through the shoulders, bring your hands behind you. Take an inhale to lift the heart here. Root down through your left shin and lift your hips up again. And you don't have to, you can always stay seated and do your back bend here. But this should feel good at this point. Chin is reaching up, glutes are activated, especially your left glutes. So that you can feel that stretch on the front of your left hip. Take one more deep breath in, lift the hips even higher, find your glutes, even your hamstrings working, and slowly release it back down. Good. Once you are there, let's bring the, the right shin now so that it does stack on top of the left. If this is impossible and you have a little pillow, you can place a pillow between your shins and that should take a lot of the pressure off and then you don't have to worry about the knee coming in directly over the opposite ankle, right? If this is still not happening for you, extend your, just extend the, uh, your left leg out of it, place the pillow underneath your right shin and then you can do the pose. All right, so this is bound pigeon or double pigeon, often referred to as fire log as well. Your feet are active. Take a deep breath in, reach the arms up. And exhale, we're gonna reach over to the right. Just like we did at the beginning. This is just kind of tricking your hips into holding this pose for a longer period of time. Focus on breath, long, deep inhales, strong, long exhales. Find a longer exhale here and reach even further. Maybe your right elbow touches the floor. Strong exhale, long exhale. Rise up as you take your next in breath. Good, and then we're gonna dip over to this side as well. So keep this knee pulling away from you. Keep the right knee pulling as far away from your right fingertips as possible. Your left elbow is coming down toward the ground. This is all about the strongest exhale possible, and it is engaging on purpose this left side. Keep drawing your right knee away from your right armpit, and keep your left arm reaching as, I'm sorry, your right arm reaching as far away from your right knee as possible as well. Inhale, reach up and rise up. Press the palms together. Exhale, dive forward over your legs. You can bring your hands forward or out to the side this time, or even back behind you. I like the arms to be back behind just because then I know you, you are not going to use your arms to prevent you from having this experience, right? We're not pushing and kind of holding ourselves back. Take your arms out of the equation if you can. Use that strong, long exhale here and dive even deeper. The really cool thing about having a 10 second exhale is you can get somewhere close to a 10 second inhale the next time you take your breath. So find that for one more time. One more strong exhale here. Count to as close to 10 as possible. When you are ready to rise up, use your longer, stronger inhale to lift your torso up. But sweep the arms up. And this time, just lean back onto your sit bones, uncross your legs, and we're gonna take a Navasana variation. I'll show you the side view. Your arms are gonna reach up, your legs are basically straight, they can stay slightly bent here. I want you to find a place where you're not feeling your hip flexors, but you're definitely feeling the lower abdominals. For every one of us, that is different. For me, if I let my legs weigh really heavy, that's where I find it the most, right? So if your legs are doing the work, your abs don't have to do as much. Try to get your legs to do less. 
and allow your abs to just shake here a bit. Two more breaths. Take one more deep breath in. And with a strong exhalation, bring the knees in slowly. Reach your arms past your shins here. And this time we're going to bring the left foot in and extend your, oh, I'm sorry, we're going to, no. We're going to bring the right foot mirroring what I'm doing in and your left leg straight. I'm going to lift the left leg up on its own. Take your leg just like we did a moment ago. Again, you may want to start with one hand on your calf and the other on your hamstrings or even both under the hamstrings. Check in with how your shoulders feel about that. We're adding this little bit of hip element to it so that we can move even deeper into those hip stretches in a moment. But for right now, we're really just focusing on this hamstring and calf stretch. Flex the foot, spread the toes, just like we did before. Bend your elbows in alongside your calf. Take a deep breath in. With a very strong long exhale, draw the leg in closer. Please feel how your core and your quads are supporting this stretch. Keep exhaling. Even when you think, well, it's probably enough, that little extra effort, that greater emptiness will support you. Take one final exhale here. Release your leg, bring it down with its own strength. And once your left heel touches, inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, dive into Janya Shushasana, draping your body over your left thigh. Draw the left sit bone back. But again, you can bring your forehead to your left shin, your ribs to your left thigh. You're pushing your right foot into your left inner thigh and your left inner thigh pushes back into that pressure which tones the lower abdomen again. It's the equivalent of, of finding Mula Bandha, right? So you might be able to even lift the pelvic floor here, feel the pelvic floor lifting without trying to figure out how to do it. If you just keep pushing your foot into your thigh and your thigh back into that pressure. You'll feel also this nice release in your lower back when you do that. So very, very definitely worth the extra effort there. Take two more of the longest exhales possible. Follow those with the longest inhales possible. Empty before you try to fill back up. At the end of your next exhalation, reach past your toes, push your foot into your thigh, push your thigh back into that pressure, and you'll notice how slowly you can rise up with the support of those intrinsic engagements. Good, beautiful. And then turn your palms out again, swivel your arms through the shoulders. Bring your hands back behind you, take your inhale here. Either stay here in this extended spine position or push down through the right shin. Point your left toes just a little bit. You're still going to spread the left toes out. Chin comes up. Wrap the shoulder blades around the spine. Engage your glutes, especially your right glutes here, to feel that stretch on your right hip flexors. Your left hamstrings are definitely engaging here as well. Push down through your right shin. I know maybe it doesn't feel like you need to, but try it. Push down to that shin and you will feel a better stretch. Take one final huge inhale here. Open the chest even more. Broaden across the fronts of your shoulders. Exhale, release the hips down. Bring your left shin and stack it over your right shin. You may want that pillow in between your shins here again. You are on the edges of your feet and not on the tops of your feet. This may feel like a lot is happening. That doesn't mean we can't do it. It just means a lot is happening. That's all that means. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just... It just feels like a lot, right? So once you find that, if it feels like tension and you can't breathe and it just feels like you're tensing up or clenching up, remember to use a pillow here or extend the lower leg out. You can just bring this leg in. You can place that one shin on the pillow or you can also do it uh, any other variation you'd like to. We're just trying to get those hip flex, the, I'm sorry, the uh, gluteus muscles to stretch here. So in this position, let's take a deep breath in and sweep the arms up again. 
This time we're gonna start by diving over to your left. Bend your right elbow and reach. As that, uh, I'm sorry, as your left elbow drops down, you're gonna feel again the left side body engaging. Take a full inhale from your hip all the way up to your armpit on the right side. And on your exhale, ring open more. So this is a twist because really it feels like we could close down, right? You're twisting to stay open. So you're tucking your left glutes underneath you a little bit more. And then while staying open, dive even further to the left. Good, slowly rise up, inhale. And we're gonna dip over to the right side. This time it'll feel a little different because of the way we stack our shins. So make sure that you are not letting your left knee come up with your left arm, but your left knee continues to pull to the left. Bend your right elbow. Feel that open rotation we're doing here. It's like you're pushing your right kidney toward the front of the room, toward the camera, right? Toward your, uh, toward your screen. Take an exhale here and pull your left knee as far away from your left fingertips as possible here. This is a deep stretch, especially if you make it so by exhaling and engaging on purpose from the right side body. Good, inhale, rise up again. Sweep the arms overhead. Exhale, dive forward over your shins. When your abs feel like they can't support you in that forward fold anymore, either take your arms back or bring your hands down. Just make sure that you're not tensing up and pushing yourself out of this experience, right? So again, abs are strong. Drape your torso over your shins here. Usually we exhale for about two seconds before we start our inhale. So I'm asking you to pay attention four or five times longer to one exhale than you normally would, than all of us normally would. This takes tremendous discipline. It doesn't mean we're gonna do it every time, but keep coming back to this idea of a 10 second exhale. We can all do this if we really decide to just keep following it. Keep following the exhale, go further in, further in, further in. Your navel draws further towards your spine. One more full breath in, followed by one stronger, longer exhale. At the end of this exhalation, go further still. Right, and then slowly, slowly rise up. Take the arms up. Once you lift your arms, lean back, uncross your legs. And this time, extend your legs straight, lay them on the floor. Inhale, lengthen up, and exhale, dive over your legs. Reach past your toes, rise up again, inhale. Exhale, lean all the way back, swivel your arms through the shoulders again, point your fingers at your toes. Inhale, reach the arms up, and extend your spine. Exhale, forward fold, reach further. Past your toes again. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, swivel the arms through. Point your toes at your, I'm sorry, point your fingers at your toes. One more time, inhale. Exhale, dive. Reach up. Inhale and exhale, swivel the arms out. And this time, lift your feet up and hold this pose. The abdominal work that we're doing today relies on your exhale. One more breath. Place the legs down, inhale, rise up. This time, dive into Paschimottanasana, but hold it. If you have a pillow, you could place a pillow right in your lap, right up against your belly, and lay your belly on that pillow. And then dive forward more. Maybe other ways to take a much thicker pillow, or two pillows. And place one a little forward so that you can 
kind of lay your, your belly onto the first pillow and your chest onto the next one. You can even turn your head to one side here. Find a strong inhale. This is a stretch for your lower back so you can get your breath to move into your lower back. And of course, a deeper stretch for the hamstrings. If you do feel like your pillows or your bolster or whatever you're using, you're getting in the way, remember you can switch out of that at any time. Three more breaths here. Long inhales, longer exhales. In a forward fold, we, we absolutely do need our abs to support us here because otherwise we tend to strain the ligaments of our spine. <laughs> so even though, and even if you are supporting yourself with a prop, make sure you are still supporting yourself with that core engagement. Take one final exhale here, 10 seconds or longer. Reach past your toes. Keep your abs engaged as you start to rise. Inhale as the arms reach up over your head. Good. And now on your exhale, making sure that you have enough mat behind you. You want to slowly, slowly roll your spine one vertebra at a time to the best of your ability, all the way down to the floor. Taking your time as you lower your spine. Once your head lands, take a deep breath in. Strong exhalation. And then from there, we're going to bring just the right knee into the chest for a moment. As you draw your right leg in, keep your left leg strong. Keep rooting down to the left glutes. Your left hamstrings are on the floor as well. And as we've been doing, we're doing a lot of hamstring stretching today. Your right foot will root up. Your right leg will straighten out. Start by holding onto the back of your leg. Then you could move your hands up to your calf again. Flex your feet, root down with the left leg. Take a strong inhale up through the inside of your inner thigh and your knee and your shin. And make sure that the inner edge of your right foot is reaching up. A lot of times it'll bow out, so your outer edge will move forward. Okay? So we want the inner edge rooting up. The up outer edge is pulling back a bit. You don't need to do that with your hands. You have feet. You have muscles in your feet that will do that for you. Okay, and then strong exhale through the core, through the quads here, through the shins. Take another deep breath in. Keep the inner edge of your foot tracking up. One more exhale to see if maybe your right leg can come any closer to your chest. And then from there, keep your right hand where it is and begin to open your right leg out to the right side. Your left leg is not going to roll over with your right leg. In other words, keep your left glutes on the ground. Take your left arm out to the left as a little anchor so that we know we're not rolling over to the right. Your right foot is reaching as far to the right as possible and your right hand is underneath like a little cup right, to hold your shin, the outer shin, with your hand. We're not pushing with our hand into our shin, okay? I know that most of the time, many, many times you won't injure yourself, but that, I've seen a lot of injuries that way. I've been in the biz a long time, right? So we don't need to push on the leg. We are supporting the weight of our, our right leg here so that the inner thigh feels like you can, it can relax. Breathe into your right inner thigh. Strong exhale. Engage your right outer thigh just a bit, not so you're Charlie horsing your right leg, but just a, a little indication to your right inner thigh that your right outer thigh can support the right leg here as well. Take one last inhale into your right inner thigh. All the way through the inner knee, inner shin, inner ankle, the inner edge of your right foot is still reaching, right? And then with your right hand helping you, Coax your right leg back up over your right hip. Take an inhale here. Flex that foot again. Now without using your arms this time, exhale, pull the toes toward the wall behind your head. Engage your quads, engage your abs. If this just feels like you're straining, bend your left knee and push the left foot down into the floor. Once your left knee is bent, it'll take the pressure off of your back. And then you can start working those hamstrings, stretching the hamstrings even more. So again, either way works, right? And if you feel like uh, you want to switch up at any time, please feel free. Your leg can be straight, and then you can decide to bend the left knee at any time. 
The right leg is as straight as you can get it. Your right quads are working. Your lower core is working. Take one more inhale here. One more exhale to really see if perhaps your toes can move further over your head. Good, and then just roll over onto your left hip bone. Keep your right leg as straight as you can get it, but roll onto the, literally onto the left hip bone so that you may need to even lift the pelvis up and rotate it down a little more. So that now your right leg is extending toward the left wall. You're gonna take your left hand to the back of your right leg. And rather than pull the leg in close for right now, we're gonna push it into our hand so the leg actually moves further away from the chest here. Your right arm will reach to the right. And we're turning our head to look over the right shoulder. Now, as you push your right hamstrings into your left hand and turn your head to the right, please notice the nice stretch there on the left side of your neck. Breathe into that stretch. You're still touching your left hip bone to the floor. Both legs are as straight as you can get them. And see how close you can get your right ear to the ground. Push your leg into your hand. Right leg into left hand. Right ear reaches closer to the floor. Breathe into the left side of your neck here. And take a long, strong exhale. Bring everything up. On your next inhale, start to bring the right leg in a little closer. You may want to grab the outer shin with your left hand and see how close that leg can get for one more hamstring stretch. At the same time, make sure, this is super important, that you're drawing your right sit bone towards your right heel. You're not pulling the sit bone away while the heel reaches in the opposite direction. Over time, again, that's gonna to be too much on the um, sciatic nerve and too much on your hands. So now release your right leg, bring the right leg back up to center, inhale here. Great job, you guys. Exhale, slowly, slowly bring your right heel all the way down to the ground. Now, when your right heel touches, take your inhale and exhale. Just release it all down into the earth. Just take a full exhale to release, to let go and to be well for a moment. Good. Now bring your left knee into your chest. Keep your right leg active. Take a huge breath into the right left side of your back, left side of your belly, all the way up as though you're breathing into your left side body to touch the left thigh here. As you exhale, draw the knee in a little closer and then extend your left leg up. Hold on to the back of your left hamstrings or your left calves here. Shoulders are down. Please check in with those shoulders, your neck, your jaw, all of the above. Remember that your right leg is not just kind of hanging out, that we're rooting down through the right leg. Your right quadriceps are pushing your right thigh bone down into the ground. When that happens, the left leg, I promise you, will stretch more. If the leg is just kind of hanging out, we won't go as far, we won't feel as much. We're here anyway, we might as well go as deeply into our potential stretch as possible. Now, again, we're gonna inhale and move the inhale all the way up the inner side of the, of the left leg, the inner thigh, inner knee, inner shin, inner ankle, inner edge of left foot, roots up, outer edge of left foot pulls down. Take another strong exhale with your foot engaged in that leg, and you will again be able to bring your leg in closer. It'll feel different too. It will feel like a completely different stretch. Your right quads are actively pushing your right thigh bone down. Take your left leg out to the left now. We're using our left hand as a little, little uh, kickstand, right? We're just gonna let the left leg move into the left hand, the weight of your leg dropping into the hand. Your arm will feel like it's supporting your left leg. Your right leg, meanwhile, is not rolling with you, right? Your right glutes are still on the ground and your right uh, quads are still active. Your right arm is gonna reach as far to the right as possible. And so you're anchoring yourself to the floor with your right leg and your right arm. Breathe into your left inner thigh. Root through the inner edge of your left foot. This is not only stretching your inner thigh, but it continues to stretch your hamstrings. Please, please breathe into your legs. I know that we don't have lungs in our legs, but try it. See if you can find a way to feel as though your legs are breathing with you. One final exhale here. 
Use that 10 second exhale to really empty out. Remind your left outer thigh to engage. Draw the left leg closer to the ground. Inhale, use your left arm now because your left inner thigh is relaxed. So use your arm to bring that leg back up. Now roll all the way over onto your, oh, I'm sorry, nope, you gotta be here for a second longer. Flex your foot here, take your arms down, and without using your, your arms now, we're using our quads and our core to make a deeper stretch happen there on those hamstrings. So another deep breath in here. Exhale, quads are strong, abs are strong. Draw the leg in closer. This is where a long exhale comes in handy. If we're just exhaling for two seconds or even one second, we don't really feel anything. If we take that exhale to empty and then beyond empty, you'll go further. So while you're emptying out, keep pulling the toes back. Your abs will be extremely engaged. Your quadriceps will be absolutely working. It might even be shaking like mine are right now. Take one more inhale. One more opportunity, long exhale. See how far you can go with this. Remember you can, I forgot to mention that you could have had your right foot on the floor. Good, and then slowly let's roll over to the right side. Rolling all the way onto your right hip bone. So you may then need to lift the pelvis up, let the hip bone down, and then with your hip bone on the ground, reach your left arm as far away from your uh, left right hip as possible. Your left leg is reaching to the left. Take your right hand to your left hamstrings. Push your leg down. This is to stretch your neck. Really nice way to stretch your neck here without weight bearing, uh, without asking your neck to support the weight of your head here. Allow the floor to support the weight of your head. Breathe into the stretch. Push your left hamstrings into your right hand. Turn your left ear closer to the floor. Make sure your left shoulder blade is also on the ground to the best of your ability. Don't miss this great twist that's also happening. This is yet another stretch for your left hamstrings. And there's a stretch also going down the IT band of the left leg. So lots of stuff happening. Breathe to all of that. Take another final exhale. Ring out. Go just a little further. Good. And then re release that feeling of needing to push the leg away and start to bring your leg in closer. Right? Bring it in so that we increase the stretch on the leg. This will also increase the stretch on the left side of your lower back. Your left sit bone is tracking towards your left heel. Please remember that part of it. Beautiful, take one more exhale here. This should just feel super good. This should feel like a huge release. Good, and then very slowly bring the left leg back up. Roll onto your back, your gaze is at the sky. Inhaling here. And with a strong exhale, bring the left heel all the way down to the ground. When your heel touches, take a deep breath in. And as you've been doing, just let your exhale remind you to let go, be well, sink down into the support of the earth. And notice how your legs are feeling. I feel great. <laughs> There's just a lot more circulation running through the legs. There's a lot more shakiness, right? That means we're a little more alive in the legs. So I'd like to continue now with, uh, with a, another hip stretch here. So I'm gonna start with the feet flat to the mat. Take your arms alongside your torso. And on your inhale, just lift your hips up into a bridge pose. But think about this as a stretch for the front of the pelvis, more than, a, more than straining, right? or pinching up anywhere. So take your arms underneath you. Engage your glutes. If your glutes feel like they've just had it, bring your hands underneath your glutes. This is gonna be a little taxing on your wrist though. So if you can, if you can keep your glutes engaged instead, I highly recommend it. Um, your hamstrings are also working here. Your feet are rooting down firmly into the floor. Breathe as deeply as you can now into the fronts of your thighs, into the front of the pelvis and into the thigh bones themselves. Don't let the butt drop down. That, that takes away the entire reason we're doing this here. So arms underneath, push down with your palms into the floor or help hold your hips up with your hands. Your glutes are active, your hamstrings are active, you're rooting down to the inner edges of both feet. 
Think of this today as a quadricep stretch and a hip flexor stretch. Breathe into the front of your thighs. Take another deep breath in and send the breath across the front of your pelvis as well. And with a strong exhalation, engage the back muscles, your glutes, your hamstrings, and your calves. Move down to the inner edges of your feet. Take one final inhale, lift the hips even higher. Take your arms out from underneath you and roll your spine as slowly as you can back down to the ground. Remember, we have 10 seconds to lower because we are taking a 10 second exhalation. Once your hips touch, take your inhale. And as you exhale, cross your right ankle to the top of your left thigh and point your right knee away from the ear. Flex your right foot a little. Take an inhale. As you exhale, you're going to bring your left hand across to push into your right knee. Meanwhile, this right arm is going to reach back. And this is just to give our spine just a little stability here, a little stretch here all the way up in the diagonal line from the back of your right hip to up underneath your left shoulder blade. Now release it back down. See if you can find a little more openness. You should be able to open that right hip just a little more now. As you exhale, pick up your left foot and draw your left knee in towards your chest. This is going to increase the stretch on the right outer glutes. Breathe into this stretch. Both of your arms can reach out or you can be more active here as well by clasping your hands around your left shin. Lift your head and shoulders off the floor. Use your core, use your abdominal wall here. Bring your forehead towards your right toe and your toes towards your forehead. Please check in with your shoulders. Remember we are exhaling, right? Remember we're really focused on using our exhale here. Strong last exhale. 10 seconds long, if not longer. And then release your head back down to the ground. Roll over so that your right foot is going to be on the floor and grab your right shin with your left hand. Reach down with your right hand, take a hold of your left foot with your right hand. Coax your left knee down so that it's pointing toward the bottom of your mat to the best of your ability there. And now it's time to stretch our quads on the left leg. Engage left glutes, left hamstrings. Press the left outer knee into the floor even more. Open your chest toward the sky and allow your back to be arched away from the ground here. So that this in and of itself is a heart opener, a chest stretch, and a release of tension across your pecs, which we all need these days. A lot of our back pain actually comes from having our, our, uh, our chest being too tight and our back being too loose. Right, so our back not having the integrity or the strength to hold us up anymore because we spend so much of our lives caved in these days. So this is your opportunity to kind of work in the opposite direction. Keep your chin up, keep pushing down through your elbows, keep squeezing your inner thighs toward each other isometrically. Engage your left glutes, engage your left hamstrings, and engage your left Outer thigh to bring your outer knee closer to the ground so that you feel, definitely feel this in your left quadriceps. Please make sure you're not feeling it in your knee. If it feels bad on the knee, it's, that's, again, we don't want to compromise our joints. So just release your foot, do what you need to to take that pressure off. But now very slowly, let's pick up the feet, cross the right knee all the way over the left knee, and take it over to the left side again. So we're just going to take a deeper or a different twist now. Taking your left hand to the uh, top of your right thigh here, just press down really gently, again, no forcing. Reach your right arm to the right. Turn your head to look over your right shoulder. And by now, with everything that we've been doing for our back, you should start to, be, to really feel like you're actually not stiff anymore. You can't even call yourself a stiffer body. You might have to call yourself loose. <laughs> Right, but and certainly free would be a better term. Right, but notice how much how much lighter you are, how much less tension there is in your body, and just ring out and open up. Mobilize as if you were a a, a looser body, or you if you were uh, if you do feel more freedom there, just start to pursue that freedom a little more as you take your final left down here. Uncross your legs now. Bring your knees up. 
Get your feet up and just rock side to side across your spine. We will get to the other side in just a moment, but just again, use a, take a moment to stabilize. And now placing the feet back down to the floor, arms alongside your torso, take an inhale here. And as you exhale, lift your hips up into a bridge pose. Walk your arms underneath you again, push down through your palms. Engage your glutes, engage your hamstrings, lift your thigh bones higher, bring your chin away from the soft part of your throat. This time, bend your elbows and push down with the backs of your arms. You can always hold on to the sides of your hips here to keep the hips high. I want you to work this as a leg stretch today, which means hamstrings are engaging while your quads are stretching. Glutes are engaging while the front of your hips are stretching. Your hands are there to help you, but make sure that doesn't cause any tension in your wrists. Push down through the backs of your hands. Do not let your glutes weigh heavy or it's going to pinch up your lower back and we don't need that kind of tension in our lives, right? Take one final inhale and lift the hips higher. Arms come out. Roll your spine slowly down. Take the entire 10 second exhale to do that. Once your lumbar spine touches down, let your pelvis touch down. Take your inhale. And on your next step, exhale, pick up your left foot and point your left knee away from you. So that the left ankle is on the top of the right thigh and the left knee is, is reaching as far away from your right shoulder as possible in that diagonal line. Reach your left arm up and out. Bring your right hand to your left inner thigh. We're just gonna push the knee away from us. I'm gonna roll over. Feel this, it's a really, it, keep the shoulder away from your ear. It's a really interesting release of tension there. As you push into the left knee, you'll feel the left knee kind of push back, let that happen. Feel that nice release in the middle back underneath the shoulder blade. Good, and then release. Pull the left knee even more open. Take an inhale here. Exhale, pick up your right foot. And draw your right knee in while keeping the left knee pointed to the left. Stay here if you'd like. As you exhale, if you want to go further, lift your head and shoulders up. Reach through that triangle with your left arm. Clasp your hands around your chin. Draw the navel in. Lift the shoulder blades up. The left knee is going to want to cave in a bit. Keep it open. Draw the right thigh closer to you. Draw your left toes closer to your forehead. Check in with your shoulders. Make sure they're not up around your ears. Focus on your exhale. One more breath. Deep breath in. 10 second exhale, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, keep exhaling, 2, keep exhaling, even if it feels like you cannot anymore, keep that action going, beautiful, now go ahead and release your head back down to the floor, step your uh, left foot over to the right, take your right hand to the base of your left shin, your left knee points up, reach down, grab your right foot with your left hand, draw your heel towards your glutes, Point your right knee as close to the bottom of your mat as possible. Or whatever that top, that's I guess your top edge. Take an inhale here, let your back arch. This is a back bend. As you exhale, engage your right glutes, engage your right hamstrings. Engage your right outer thigh to bring the right knee closer to the floor. If any of that bugs your knee, do not do what bugs your knee. Right? Only go as far as you can without any twinge at all in the knee. Uh, meanwhile, your left foot is rooting down. Try to keep some space there between the left hip bone and the left thigh bone. So if your thigh bone is coming in and you're just feeling that pinch in the hip flexor, just move your knee away. Just open it up. We want to keep that space open. Right? We've spent a lot of time today getting the hip flexors to relax. So we don't want them to pinch up here unnecessarily. We're still breathing here, the chin is up, the body is open, the front of your body is really open. So take those breaths. The next few inhales from the hips all the way up to the shoulders. Expand right across the collarbone. As you exhale, knit your back ribs closer together. The longer the exhale, the more you will feel very plugged in 
to all of that integrity that we're looking for here today. So I take one final exhale. And again, make sure your glutes are engaging, hamstrings are engaging, left outer thigh, is, right outer thigh is engaging. You may even be able to lift the pelvis up, feel the stretch on the right quadriceps, and then bring the feet up, cross left knee all the way over right, and draw both knees over to the right side of the room. Both arms reach out, or you can take your right hand to the top of your left thigh, we're pressing gently down. We are not forcing in any way, shape, or form. There's no reason to. Our bodies are looser and lighter, more malleable, more flexible. We feel more free in our bodies at this point. Breathe into all of that freedom. Identify with this freer, more open body. And again, at this point, this should just feel good. But you do still want to use some intrinsic strength to, to support this deeper stretch. Take one final exhale here, ring out one more time. Uncross your legs, bring your knees, your feet off the floor, and walk your knees across from one side of the room to the other. Good. You can start with your knees in close, so you're walking across the back of your rib cage. Move the knees a little further away so you're walking across the lower back, the lumbar spine. Move the knees a little further away so you're walking across the back of the pelvis. And then maybe your toes touch and you continue to rock side to side. Again, just to feel as though you're massaging out your sacroiliac joints and just releasing your back. And then very, very, when you are ready, very slowly, just start to extend the legs out. And once you do so, you might want to lift one hip and then the other. Make sure even in this position that you do feel like you are releasing tension there. Extend your legs out, your arms out. Strong exhale here. The exhale again is this signaling to your body to let go. Into the, into the support of the earth, to give in to the pull of gravity, to surrender, right? To that deep sense of well-being that we have encouraged again and again today as we move through our practice. Please notice how you are feeling in this moment. Please notice that there might still be some tension that isn't allowing you to feel as free as you could feel here. Decide to let go of that tension as well. <clears throat> I'd like to finish the practice today by um, reading a little excerpt from David White. Um, this is something he wrote over 15 years ago. It's very, very um, apropos for today. I feel as if humanity itself is sheltering from our, a particularly cold winter right now. I would, let's, um, let's mix cold, or let's match cold winter with um, just a sense of feeling, right, isolated, right? So I feel as if humanity itself is sheltering from a particularly cold winter right now, gathered round the dying embers of a fire that seems to give off little heat, very aware that spring and summer feel far, far off, or that the end of this it seems far off, freedom seems far away. It is a time when people naturally begin to wonder if a warm spring day will ever come, if freedom will ever come. It is especially marked when we have little good human leadership to rally our spirits. Now is the time to look to more timeless, invisible threads that weave together a life worth living. There is a political and social fight necessary, yes, but there is also an inner integrity. There is also an inner integrity, a necessary willingness to enjoy life. A, a fierce intentionality 
to experience life as it is. And a greater perspective than our two tangible difficulties with the present. So for these last few moments, even though the difficulties are so tangible and so in our face, look for, as, as David White says, the real conversation awaiting you underneath all of those two tangible difficulties. What we find at the end of a long exhalation, what we find as we dig deeper, is that fierce intentionality, that inner integrity, a willingness to enjoy life, a fierce intentionality to experience life. So as you rest at the very end of your exhalation, feel that feeling of being plugged into something much deeper the conversation awaiting you underneath the obvious for just a few more moments of the class. And now you can decide to stay in your uh, relaxed pose and just bring your hands to your heart or you could roll to one side and then press up into a seated pose. Wherever you are, wherever you find yourself, please notice how you are feeling in this moment, how your body feels, how your mind feels, how your breath feels. And thank you so much for being here with me this afternoon. Have a wonderful rest of your evening. Namaste.